Ladies and gentlemen, thank you again for tuning in to another edition of Chris Black's and JPW Report. I am, of course, the natural Chris Black of the Saturday Night Slamcasters podcast, independent professional wrestler, and everybody's favorite narcissist. On today's show, I'm here to talk about night six of the New Japan Cup, which took place on March 11th, 2021. This is the first night of second round matches of the tournament. First round matches were good. We had a lot of eliminations that we did not see coming. I know this second round of matches are going to be just as good. Tonight we have six matches to go over, two of which are second round matches. So let's get right to it. In the first match, we have a tag match between Suji and David Finley versus Tomohiro Ishii and Yoshihashi. In this opening match, we do get a preview between the upcoming Yoshihashi and David Finley match. You know, I've been looking at David Finley like, man, this man, he reminds me of somebody. And as I think about it, he kind of looks like a hybrid CM Punk and Silas Young. Silas Young of Ring of Honor. If you don't know who that is, where the hell have you been? Anyway, Finley and Yoshi start the match off, giving us a good preview of what's to expect. During this second round of action, Suji gets into a striking match with Ishii, which I would not recommend. However, Suji does hold his own, taking Ishii down in the corner. But Ishii just shuts that shit down with a very hard forearm to the face. Gotta have an iron jaw working in New Japan. Suji, I guess being a glutton for punishment, is wanting more of Ishii, so he is tagged back in. So I assume the match is probably about to end. But no, I'm wrong. The match actually goes on longer than I thought. But at the end of the day, all it takes is a hard lariat by Ishii and Suji is pinned. David Finley and Yoshihashi have a friendly exchange of words on the apron regarding their upcoming match. At which point, Finley walks away and says, you have no fucking chance. But <laughs> language... Kevin Kelly kind of chastised him a little bit, <laughs> saying that you shouldn't use such language like that. But again, can't wait to see that match. Second match of the evening, we have a six-man tag match consisting of Uramura, Honma, Kojima taking on Jado, Takahashi, and Fale. This is a filler match. Obviously, none of these fellas are still in the tournament. Honma's out, Kojima's out, Takahashi obviously out, and Bad Luck Fale, all eliminated. Um, and yes, Kevin Kelly, I do follow Bad Luck Fale on Instagram, and I do enjoy the content that he puts up. If you're not following Bad Luck Fale, find him on Instagram and follow that man. I'm listening to Kojima's music, and it kind of sounds like something out of the 90s Street Fighter music. Like you can, I can imagine hearing his music as, I don't know, Guile is fighting or something. Anyway, Bullet Club jumps their opponents before the bell rings. Jado making use of that kendo stick. They shine up Uramura a little bit before putting the heat on them. Again, these matches is a great opportunity for the Young Lions to get some shine and to get some exposure, get some ring experience. And at the end of the match, it's down to Uramura and Yujiro. Oh, Lord have mercy. I don't think I ever wanted a young lion to get the pin as much as I do at this point I would probably lose my shit if Uramura pinned Yujiro in this match but you know I don't get what I want as Yujiro unfortunately pins Uramura after a hard lariat and Jado adding insult to injury starts to smack Uramura with the kendo stick after the win <sighs> I hate Yujiro god damn it why didn't they give Uramura that win? He needed it more than Yujiro did. Moving on to the next match, we have more LIJ taking on the Chaos team. We have Sho, Okada, Goto, and Nagata taking on Bushi, Naito, Takaki, and Sonata. And actually, I'm not sure if Nagata is part of Team Chaos. I'll have to check on that. Anyway, this is a preview match that, that showcases what to expect between Sonata and Nagata and of course more Tagaki and Goto and I've got to tell you I've had just about enough of previews between Goto and Shingo can we just get to the damn match 
this feels like deja vu uh we get some more naito and okada during this match oh yeah same old same old don't get me wrong these matchups are normally really really good i just feel like we've had too many of them i might need to mix them up just a little bit more i like the fact that lij works as heels whenever they're up against other baby faces uh sonata and nagata their exchange that's something different it gives me an idea of what to expect in their upcoming second round match at the end show gets the shock arrow on bushi and picks up the victory so this time lij gotta hold that l moving on to the next match we have a six-man tag of hanare juice robinson and tanahashi challenging bullet club members jay white kenta and chase owens obviously this match is to give you a preview of tanahashi versus jay white because all other men have been eliminated on the babyface side well hanari and robinson have been eliminated tanahashi still in because he had to buy kenta and jay white still alive as well tanahashi calls out jay white to start as they have a little bit of an exchange hanari gets in the ring to extract some revenge on jay white um not a lot I can say about this match. It was a good match overall, and in the end, Tanahashi gets the submission on Owens. So I'll just leave it on that. If you want to go back and watch it, watch it. It's a good match, but again, let's we're, we're here for the tournament. That's what we're here for. So let's get right into the second round matches, the start of the second round matches. Match number one, we have Toro Yano taking on the great Okan. Okay, so I have this love-hate thing with Toro Yano matches. Sometimes I just want to get to a fucking match, and sometimes what happens is interesting. This was one of those interesting matches uh, because you have such a, a contrast of styles. Okan is just so serious, and Yano is, well, Yano, so I knew this match was going to be interesting. Yano's on the outside of the ring, and he pulls out <laughs> some tape, and Okan, he must have done his homework on Toro Yano. So he turns around and puts his hands behind his back and actually invites Yano to tape his hands up. So, okay. Yano gets in, tapes his hand up, and then Okan instructs him, go ahead and take the pads off, the turnbuckle pads. Kind of like you know you're going to do it eventually. So Yano takes off the pad, runs at him, takes a swing. Okan ducks it and breaks right out of the tape. I mean... Let's be honest, we all know Toro Yano probably should have taped taped it a little tighter. So it was pretty obvious that, that he was going to break out of it. So anyway, Yano doesn't seem bothered by this. Okan lays on his back. And as soon as Yano tries to pin him, he puts Yano in a knee bar trying to submit him the way he took out Naito. Um, Okan right away is showing that he's not going to fall for any of Yano's shenanigans. But Yano bails outside the ring, trying to bait Okan outside. Okan grabs Yano's chair and sits right in the middle of the ring. And again, he must have done his homework. He knows, he knows Yano's get down. He knows that he's going to try to ambush him on the outside so he can get a count out victory. Knowing this, Yano now grabs a chair and sits on the outside of the ring and mocks Okan. But it doesn't bother Okan because, Yano, you can't win on the outside if Okan is still sitting in the inside. So it's kind of a stare down. One of them's like, okay, so someone's got to make a move. Referee starts to count. Okan, seemingly tired of waiting, he grabs Toro Yano's King of Pro Wrestling provisional trophy and threatens to break it. So Yano gets back in the ring. Okan offers Yano a handshake. <laughs> and then he Superman grips that shit I'm talking he gripped it like Superman did Zod in Superman 2 if y'all remember that I might be showing my age then he takes Yano down with a side sleeper or a side choke Yano finally I don't know he finally wake, comes to his senses and goes back to his amateur roots and throws Okan around just a little bit but that doesn't last long as Okan starts to chop him down with them hard Mongolian chops them screaming like a banshee chops effective but mm, kind of weird he puts that claw to his face taking yano down to the ground yano's able to escape and then low bridge is kind of outside the ring as he crashes into the barricade yano runs out and ties his braid to the barricade 
I'm thinking Yano's about to get a, a count out victory. But Okan pulls out some scissors. Again, this man must have done his homework. And he came prepared for Yano's shenanigans. And he actually cuts his braid so he can escape. He just looks pissed because he had to cut his hair. So he charges at Yano with the scissors in his hands. Yano pushes the ref out of the way. Doesn't see when he low blows Okan. And then he gets the roll up for the one, two, three. Yano beats Okan. I can't say I can't believe it because, well, Yano, I have to admit he has some of the most creative matches I've ever seen from a comedy wrestler. And he's often, it's him beating people that he has no business defeating. This was one of those matches. I think Okan, he could have used the win more. But whatever. Not disappointed. It was an interesting way, very creative way for Yano to go up against a guy who obviously came prepared. But at the end of the day, I guess you can't really be prepared for a low blow. <laughs> All right, our main event for the evening. We have Jeff Cobb of the United Empire taking on Evil of Bullet Club. And this match was far different than the one we just saw. Evil bails out the ring right away. Taking a page out of Jay White's book, playbook. A win over Evil would probably be really big for Jeff Cobb at this point in his career. Evil tries to use Dick to distract Cobb. Well, not his. We're talking Dick Togo, but anyway, you know what I'm saying. But it doesn't work. He tries to use the distraction, but it doesn't work. Cobb is all over Evil on the outside. Continues being dominant with him in the inside of the ring. Dick Togo grabs Jeff Cobb's leg and gets the distraction that Evil needs, allowing him to capitalize on the outside of the ring. He sends Cobb into the timekeeper's table, and we all know it's just a distraction for what comes next, that dreaded chair spot where he wraps the chair around their head and then takes a big old swing at it. This time it looked nasty because the chair didn't quite spin the way it's supposed to, maybe because Jeff Cobb's neck is just so thick. Anyway, uh, Jeff Cobb is thrown into the timekeeper's table a second time, I guess just for good measures. Dude, the timekeeper dude, he really needs to like move his table back like three feet. That way this shit doesn't happen to him every single evil match. (laughs) Jeff Cobb starts to fire up on evil and he even deadlifts suplex evil into the ring from the outside in an impressive show of strength. Dude, Jeff Cobb is, (laughs) he's a beast. Evil turns things back around, locks in that sharpshooter, but Jeff Cobb is able to escape, only to be hit with Darkness Falls for a very close two count. However, Jeff Cobb is not done. He fires up again, avoiding Dick, (laughs) pause, (laughs) avoiding Dick Togo, but when he slams Evil, Red Shoes is taken out because Evil grabs onto him, so he gets taken out all the way outside the ring. Dick Togo is into the ring right away to try to double team Jeff Cobb and help out Evil. But Cobb hoists up Dick Togo and Evil and and power slams both of them at the same time. Jesus Christ, this man is a powerhouse. As we hit the 20-minute mark, the ref gets back into the ring. Jeff Cobb wants to take Evil out, but Evil collapses in order to avoid a tour of the islands again. Very Jay White like. Jay White must have pulled Evil aside and, like, you know, gave him a little bit of advice. He pops up and lays out Cobb with the Lariat because, yeah, he was just playing possum. After that, we get some good back and forth action as both men try to put the other away. Yujiro, oh, did I mention he was on commentary? Fucking jobber. He seems more comfortable in that position. Stay out the ring. Won't you do more commentary? But he jumps off the commentary desk and onto the apron just as Jeff Cobb is about to give a tour. But Evil is able to escape, and while the referee is distracted, he low blows Jeff Cobb. And from there, everything is evil, and Jeff Cobb is eliminated. Evil advances to the quarterfinals. Uh, Bullet Club and all their cheating ways. I'm not I'm not 100% disappointed. I mean, I I do like I do like Evil, but I think Jeff Cobb could have used this win 
more. Mostly because I don't think Evil's going to win this tournament. I mean, he won last year. So, for the same reasons, I don't think Jay White's going to win. Well, not the exact same reasons, but basically, I don't think Evil's going to win because, number one, I don't think that he's beating Koto Ibushi. And since he won last year's New Japan Cup, there's no need for him to win this year's. So, and you don't want to repeat of last year's him winning the New Japan Cup and then beating Ibushi for it. So, just not a good choice. Evil, you should have took the L. I think Jeff Cobb could have used this win a lot more. Anyway, that's going to do it for my coverage of Night 6 of the New Japan Cup. If you've enjoyed my review, go ahead and hit that like button. Do that right now. Now's a good time to do that. And if you are looking forward to some of my future reviews, because I'm covering every single night of this tournament, it's only going to get better from here. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button so that you are notified whenever new videos are uploaded. You can find me on social media. Links are in the description. That'll take you to my Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, as well as the Saturday Night Slamcasters podcast, YouTube channel, Facebook page, and Facebook group. So let's go ahead and take this home. I enjoy bringing you these reviews from New Japan Pro Wrestling, the best presentation of pro wrestling on the planet. I will see you next time when we continue off with night seven, continue with second round matches. Until next time, come get slammed.